humankind has industrialized much of the solar system. Earth has deteriorated into a place of squalor and decay. In orbit, a new breed of worker has emerged, the Ship Breaker. The labor is extremely dangerous, but for a select few, the hazard pay is worth the risk. Oh god, turn the volume down, why is that still so loud? This is Hard Space Shipbreaker. It's an early access game that just recently came out, and it is... I think it's extremely cool. I've played a bit of it. And so, basically, you just break down ships. You just choose what ships you want to take, and you break them down. You start off a billion dollars in debt and you slowly work your way down from there. Um, Alright. <clears throat> so let's see. Let's start off with this macro, the Atlantic Odin. So each shift, you have 15 minutes to get... All right, Gutter. Oh my god. Why is this still so loud? Now that you've completed your training, That's you're much better. I know the thought of making 10,000 credits, let alone a billion, sounds impossible. But I can assure you it is within your reach, if you put in the work. You got the DNA to be a great salvager one day. Literally. Your report here says your blood work confirmed ideal genetic makeup, physique, intelligence, and psychological profile for the position of shipbreaker. I'm guessing that means Link thinks you're less likely to blow yourself up. Let's see if they're on to something. Complete your work order and return here to your hab when you're ready for another ship. And careful with that reactor. One false move and you're gone. And a whole lot of credits for Good luck, Cutter. Be brisk. Alright, so basically it's just like the game sounds. Or the game title suggests. You literally just break ships apart and salvage them for cash. You start off with small ships and then you work your way up to bigger ones. I haven't gotten all the way through. I cuz this still feels relatively loud. 10 2 There we go. So each shift is about 15 minutes. I'll probably do two shifts in one video and see where that goes. So we have a work order and these are the things that you need to get. These don't provide extra cats, but they provide LT, which is how you get upgrades for your suit and all your equipment. So I'll just tether these and pull those down into the barge. This entire ship is almost fully destructible, except for these panels made of uh, nanocarbon. Your laser has, the laser cutter has two different modes. It has a beam used for cutting and then it has uh, a line cutting useful for cutting open panels. I tend to use the uh, line cutter because it's a lot faster. So I could just manually grab them and yank them down, but I set tethers to have them pull down themselves. So that frees me up to do other things. So, we need to salvage 
800 kilograms of metal, 2,300 nanocarbon, a power cell, and then the reactor. I can't just slice open the ship because it's currently pressurized. So I need to depressurize the inside first. There we go, we got some goodies in here. Some fuel, some oxygen. What have we got in here? Data drive. Just hold on to that. No door handle. Here's the reactor. So these ships are relatively easy and small. I haven't gotten too far into the big ones just yet. That was loud. Alright, so... This thing will start melting down as soon as it's yanked out of there. So, we got a clear path to the barge. To know where to cut all of these hazard things that are known as cut points. This is your scanner. It'll tell you the structural points that are cuttable. And all of everything. I don't have the systems or objects unlocked yet, but it's pretty intuitive to know which is which. Systems just tells you what's uh, mechanical, electrical, and stuff like that, and objects just tells you what uh, what uh, different objects are what. All right, so now we just yank this out of here. There we go. <clears throat> get this door out of the way so this um, grapple gun also has the ability to just shove objects away alright so first we need to before we can get the metal and everything we need to start cutting off these uh, lower and upper panels. There we go. And throw that in there. Grab the other one. And throw that in here. Got two tethers left. Let's get some of the upper. This panel right here is not nanocarbon. This is aluminum, so this has to go into the furnace. I'll just use that canister instead. Alright, throw that into the furnace. Pull that up. Throw that into the processor. And I'm out of tethers. That's fine. I got all except this panel back here. I'll just, uh, for now, I'll just cut everything up. So that should have released the back end. Come over here. These should release the nose of the of the shuttle. There we go. And since we can't really pressurize this area anymore. These aren't really necessary, the door controls. So currently, I could go back get tethers and start salvaging bigger pieces of the ship. But, 
these are worth... Oop! Well, there goes that seat. All these together are worth a lot of money if you salvage them all. In a lot of games, I'm a huge uh, stickler for salvaging and looting things. Scavenging. So, I always try and... Uh, use everything I can because everything has a use. Some things I don't like these lights. Those don't give really anything. So it's not really a use in taking my time to do those. Um, I'm gonna pick this up because as soon as I remove this power this power junction uh, it's gonna shoot out chunks of electricity and that could blow something up all right we're good okay we got these storage bins so a friend of mine said that I'm unprofessional by oh that's gonna be tricky to get out Come on. There we go. Nope. Not quite. There we go. Because I don't crop anything. But I don't edit. Everything's just the raw footage. Somewhat because I'm lazy. And somewhat because I'm not someone who's really good at that sort of thing. Right, we don't need this. And the rest of what's in here should be electrical. Oh, there's this. Alright. I can just stay back and start yanking these other things out of here. Reel it in and throw. Reel it in and throw. This is mostly what the game's all about. Alright, so that's all empty. I think I need to cut it away from the rest of the sides of the ship. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, the panel and stuff. There is something I need to do back here before I go grab more tethers. I need to remove the thruster. Come on. Come out of there. There we go. Alright. Oop. Might as well grab more oxygen while I'm here. Save that other oxygen thing. Alright, we can go ahead and throw this panel here into the processor now. The reason I use the tethers and not just the actual gun is because those are way too heavy to, for the gun to uh, move properly. Alright. This should actually be detached. Let's see. Five. Uh, yeah, I think it's detached. Yep. Alright, so this entire thing can go straight into a processor. Ugh. The nausea. Alright. More tethers equals more pulling power. Oh yeah, there's these. I kinda want these as well. Can 
Kind of forgot those were there. All right, that's getting sucked in. And that opens up the back here. Now all I have left to get is the power cell. Which side is that on? There it is. Oops, I cut open the airlock by accident. All right, and that's the last thing. This panel should have been undone as well, I think. I think this panel should be loose. Yep. So that airlock's gonna hold on to some of the ships well. I got a minute and a half to do this. A minute and a half to salvage as much as possible. You see that bar at the top? That I think is the profit margin bar. And the less the less profit there is. Or if that goes under that green line, that means you could make money, but not much. And if it goes under the red, it's not worth salvaging any more of the ship. So I tend to stop if I go under the green bar or I'm very close to it. This should be the last of the most expensive items. One minute left, Cutter. Time to start wrapping things up. Weaver out. Alright, Weaver, I'm almost done anyway. Yep, this whole thing's rotating. Okay, yank that one. Yank that one. Alright, we got the coolant system here. There should be one coolant thing left, but I'm not going to be able to get that in time. So we'll just yank off this last panel here. And that's everything I can use. Yep, that looks good to me. Ah! Apparently volume adjustment doesn't work here. And so that was two and a half million. Destroyed some things in the process, but most of that is just straight up cash. The nacelles all together are worth a huge amount. So is the nanocarbon, some of the titanium. Uh, the reactor is worth the most. It's 500 for each reactor. And then you can see the seats and then the airlock consoles. Those are all, those all are very expensive things. But. Where is it? Aluminum is not worth that much. Which is why I don't usually throw things into the furnace. Because if things go into the furnace, you get some money from it. But not as much as if they went into the processor. And every morning, every time you finish your shift, you have to pay all of these expenses. You, I haven't gotten to this point, but you can buy your own cutter, grapple, helmet, and all of these things eventually just having the interest rate because currently you have to pay about five hundred thousand every every time you finish your shift so you always have to make sure you can get at least five hundred thousand a shift so basically my income was about two million for that and since I'm probably going to do this for half an hour that ship is done Oh, I should probably explain this. So these first couple are, are already 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 completed because these are like the tutorial ones, and I skipped the tutorial. So these are the ones I need to do to unlock better ships and so on. So I need to complete more work orders and salvage more furniture and make another twenty-five or two point five million credits. To get to the next level. That should allow me to get the next ship type, I think. Alright, so this one is the most expensive. I have no idea what it means by days. I don't know what most of this information means. I just go by total value and total mass. So the literal aerial is next.
entire macro class was decommissioned once they used the force of the rail team. Think scooped up thousands of them on the team. Now finish up your work on the Salvage as much as you can of each ship before moving on to the next. We call it use the whole buffer. You want to pay off that mountain of debt you're carrying on your back. And that's done. We wrap. Yep, that's how it's done. Basically, I always want to start salvaging as much as the exterior as possible without opening up the interior. I can't take out the thrusters yet because I still have to depressurize the inside. And cut that one. Okay, where was the airlock? Other side, probably. Just the nacelles on this thing are about 10% of the entire profit of the ship. Alright. This is still like in really early access, so there's not many ship types or content things. I'm excited to see where this game goes, because they could add so many things to this. I would like one of these, thank you. Alright, nothing special. Doink. Oh, hello. These utility keys are useful for thruster detachment. If there's ever a fuel pipe between uh, the thruster and the reactor, you have to use a utility key to shut it off or else there could be an explosion in the back of the ship. And these keys are expensive, like 50,000 or fi either half a million or 50,000. One of the two. Alright. Not gonna listen to the audio file. <clears throat> Alright, so same thing. Let's see how fast we can do this. So now that I'm not explaining, so I need to do this. Do this. Alright, and then we need to cut open this. Let's see how much of this I can get and how fast. Okay, throw that in there. Now it may seem like I'm not using the scanner function, this function, that often. Because I don't really need it. I've memorized basically the entire layout of these smaller ships, but it's the bigger ones that have no idea what anything is going on in them. I have to yank them out before I've attached a tether or else they'll rotate the entire ship, making things more difficult. those in there. I will detach the top. I probably don't have to waste time detaching that since it's not made of nanocarbon. <clears throat> oh well. start detaching all of these.
take the computer terminals and everything like that out first. I'm going to leave those storage boxes since they're such a pain to get out of there. If I got time, I'll do that. I have no clue where that just went. <laughs> <clears throat> Be the last one of those. Nope, one more. All right. Let's grab one of these. All right, I need to go grab some tethers. So something they don't teach you in the tutorial is that you can right click to reel things to you or reel yourself in depending on how heavy the object is. Alright, so it's 50,000 per utility key, so it's always nice to have one on hand. <clears throat> Let's get the last of these plates. Most of the time, if something's a cut point, always cut it, because it will detach something and make your life a whole lot easier to handle. I gotta use the laser on these because most of these other panels are also cuttable. So I don't want to destroy any material accidentally or blow up something that's on the other side. Everything should be detached. Alright, now I can get the thruster out. <clears throat> there we go. And then I can just throw this entire back. Okay, there's one of the bugs. Doing that tends to fix it. Ah, shit, couldn't save the fuel, the other fuel canister. That's fine. Alright, so power cell's not here. But I can at least uh, undo this panel. Okay, so that goes in here. Undo this other one. There it is. Need to be careful of the coolant container there. There we go. Now instead of trying to pull it out through this small gap, I can just throw all these into the processor and do it that way. Let's start with the front. While those go in, I'll just take this out. Throw the next one in there. Put the power cell in. Last with the work order. Oh, I'm out of tethers. Well, I got five minutes left. Yep. Alright, Cutter, you got five minutes left of this shit before they turn the lights out on you. Get her pattern. Be right. Alright, that's the last panel. Let's 
and I can get up in here. Oh, shit. <clears throat> Hello? Guess I'm not getting that. A little bit of wasted money, but oh well. Come on. Get in there. Alright. The rest of that could also go in there. This is the airlock, so I don't think I can cut anything. So we're actually at pretty much the end point for this. Pretty much. I can just tether all of this stuff into different things. Let's we'll start with the nodes of the ship. Throw all the tethers into this. Grab whatever's left over here. Anything that goes into the, I've said this before, but anything that goes into the furnace doesn't cost much, so it's not much of a point. So, and I'll just throw the rest of that into the processor, and that should be the last of the ship. There we go. I already grabbed everything of value. I'll just reel in and double check yep that's all that's left right here so we'll just drag this into the other one is it moving? yep we go. It's very easy. If you're quick enough, you can get the entire mackerel salvaged. You'll be losing the aluminum, but that's not worth much anyway. Not compared to salvaging even a small amount of nanocarbon. Get the trash out of here, because why not? And that's the entire ship already done with <laughs> about two minutes to spare. Ah, oh, I didn't get those storage crates out of the nose. I said if I had time, I'd do that. Oops. Just end the shift. Nice. And there's the next ship class. But yeah, all that nanocarbon compared to the aluminum. Some good, very expensive stuff. Very expensive stuff. Titanium also, like, if you look at the aluminum, that's 400 for about 4,800. The titanium, for probably about double, is worth way more than that. So it's always worth getting, getting titanium and nanocarbon over the aluminum. But that's going to do it for this one. We'll check out the next size in the next episode.